Bonjour à tous, aujourd'hui je vais faire un interview de Mauro Stemberger. Alors aujourd'hui c'est officiel, on accueille Mauro Stemberger dans Alexis et les Bonsai et je suis très heureux d'avoir réussi à organiser cette interview. Alors forcément il ne va pas être là physiquement, on va s'appeler par téléphone. J'ai préparé une dizaine de questions, on va voir comment ça se passe. Alors j'espère que cette interview va vous intéresser et je vais l'appeler tout de suite. Thank you very much, Mauro, to, to accept this interview. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Yes, it was very quick, uh, just to send... Uh, Uh, a message on your Facebook uh, page? No, you know, I'm, I'm uh, as everyone, I'm home now and having good time with my trees. Uh, More time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I have, uh, I have a little bit of free time and I spend most of the day here in my workshop uh, with yes, my good. trees doing maintenance. So it's no problem to take some time. Okay, good. So more time with uh, your trees? Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> was uh, almost 10 years uh, I was not able to spend a month, uh, a full month uh, with my trees in spring because oh, I was yes. always traveling uh, United States, uh, Europe uh, and then three days home uh, and then another month away but now I'm home I can check everything all my trees are in perfect condition <laughs> okay so other people uh, can handle uh, your trees when you are unavailable So I have some students uh, and most of the work uh, my wife uh, does, uh, so she does most of the maintenance, ah. uh, especially about the, you know, giving products to the tree, fungicide, pesticide, fertilizer. And okay, cool. uh, for the moment I have a strange setting because I have three collections, let's say. I have a bonsai museum, uh, one hour from my place. Yes. Uh, I have my own collection, that is this one I'm filming now. And then okay. I have an, another place uh, where I keep my Yamadori and I start developing the trees uh, from nature. Here at home, where I'm now, I have only finished trees. Okay, uh, maybe we can uh, uh, see that with one of the questions about your, your placement, your setup. Yeah, It's yeah, sure. very interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's start with the first question, if you are Perfect. ready. Sure, I'm born So, uh, how and when uh, do you start uh, bonsai? So, I was uh, 14 years old uh, and I came across uh, some bonsai magazines uh, and yes. in a local, uh, you know, flower shop uh, I see some little bonsai on my way back home from school and okay. I start getting interested. I live in a beautiful town, uh, it's called Feltre, it's in the middle of the Dolomites so I was always uh, surrounded by nature and I always love to go in nature and find animals and plants, uh, uh, you know, uh, seed uh, and plant seeds and develop trees. Uh. Okay. And when I found bonsai, I really, you know, found my way because I love uh, to see these, uh, you know, pieces of nature developing in a bonsai pot. Yes, it, it can bring several, uh, several aspects of uh, what you, you yeah. like. Yeah, exactly. And I, again, I'm very lucky because I really, even not uh, one hour from the very high mountain, the Alps, uh, so it's, it's perfect. It's perfect for me. Ah, for collecting, maybe? Also, even for collecting, but also when I was still not doing bonsai my, with my family, we went uh, there for hiking uh, all the time since I was a little child. Oh, so, yes. you know, uh, I, I, I grew up uh, surrounded by nature, so it's something okay. that uh, was always uh, inside me. Okay, very good uh, environment. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Can you describe uh, your uh, current collection? Uh, numbers, spaces? Uh, a st a step of cultivation? So, uh, I start bonsai as an amateur, but my goal was always uh, to have a very good bonsai collection. So, okay. I was always looking for very good material, either collecting material in Europe or Japanese material, imported trees. Uh, yep. So, I was always looking for those trees and improving my skill and in the meantime, my collection. So, uh, at the moment, uh, Uh, most of my collection are conifers uh, because uh, living in the middle of the mountain uh, my climate, uh, in, especially in winter, is pretty harsh uh, so conifers are the, the ones that are doing better in my place uh, most of my trees uh, are pines, uh, I have a lot of scots pine and mugo pine but yes. uh, I, I have also 
uh, a lot of deciduous tree elms, uh, privet, uh, uh, maples uh, and other tree that I develop uh, also for sale because in the meantime with my bonsai career I switch uh, from being an amateur to be a professional so I have also to create trees uh, for my clients uh, and uh, trees for, for sale so the, the collection is always uh, uh, up uh, to the certain amount of tree that I can manage and he, here at home I have 50 trees uh, but I have another almost 100 tree in the museum uh, and uh, I have almost 300 material uh, in the place where I have my Yamadori so it's a lot of work uh, but you yes. know developing trees is a very good satisfaction I, I love to develop them and also to collect them I have some trees that I will never sell because uh, they are part uh, of my bonsai career so I love them Yes, yeah, I understand. Hey, do, do you see uh, my small collection? <laughs> yeah, even it's, it's even good. this with this amount of uh, spaces, uh, yeah, I need uh, a lot of time. So this oh, yeah, period sure. is very good for me. Uh. Sure, you 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 have a good setting, a good a good garden. Uh, in in this place where I am now. Uh, I have to kind of uh, bend the space uh, along my need for yes. the tree <laughs> because I have this big terrace where, I've, where I'm now. I build another terrace uh, with wood uh, in the back to have more space. Underneath uh, I have a, gr a greenhouse for my deciduous tree during winter. And downstairs uh, I have a little piece of garden, maybe even smaller than yours, uh, where I keep the bigger trees because uh, under this terrace uh, is my workshop so it's easier to bring the bigger trees uh, inside uh, rather than go down uh, with uh, the the stairs so okay. you know oh, for, you, for you, now, ju you just you just anticipate the the third question ah, okay sorry <laughs> but just just to sum up the, the second question can you uh, tell me the distribution between deciduous and conifer Forty uh, percent or fifty ah, okay. percent? No, <laughs> let, let's say I have twenty percent of the seeds. Uh, okay. And, okay. And so you like conifer? <laughs> you know. You love uh, conifer. I like I like the harsh aspect of the conifer, yes. with the twisty trunks and the very dramatic deadwood or bark. But also I like the seeds tree that they have a lot of character. I'm not the type of yes. person for the very formal style tree. Yes. I like more very dramatic style. Okay, so more free style for deciduous trees. Yeah, exactly. Not That's the, the Japanese uh, code. Uh, yeah, I, I love <laughs> to see With the perfect nebari. Uh, no, no, I love to see them, but yes. uh, they don't match uh, in my collection. I get a little bit bored on those trees that are too formal, you know? It's very long to, yeah, yeah, to sure, get these trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate the work uh, and I love it. But yes. uh, again, it's just a question of the feeling uh, that the tree gives me, mm. you know? Okay. I'm not uh, in touch with the peaceful feeling. Mm. I want more the very dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic feeling that uh, a tree that uh, suffer can give you. Okay. <laughs> How did you organize the arrangement? Do you use a chairs, table, uh, a bench? No, so I have, uh, so here in this main place, uh, I have benches in the upper yes. part, uh, and uh, I have a single stands uh, in the garden downstairs because okay. I have the I have the bigger trees, uh, and also because uh, here in the terrace uh, to have benches uh, is a little bit more useful for have a little bit more trees uh, rather than have uh, yes. just a single stance uh, and uh, also I, I have uh, most of all my deciduous tree in this side uh, because it's the side uh, with less uh, sunlight uh, and in the outside part uh, I have all the juniper and the pine and also downstairs uh, I have most of the pines uh, because they require more sunlight Okay, so about the, the sun exposition, how do you manage? Exactly, so uh, my trees see the sun from 6 in the morning, as I said, to like 3 o'clock, uh, no more than 3 o'clock. Uh, for okay. example, I can't grow here in this location Sabina juniper, because Sabina, for example, is very high dependent uh, from the sun. So mm -hmm. I need to grow them uh, in the museum where I have uh, full sun all day from morning okay. to afternoon. 
but uh, for example Itoegawa, Juniper, Scots Pine, Mugo Pines, uh, the sun is good uh, here where I, I have my own my main collection. Oh, okay, even the Scots Pine? Yeah, 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 even the Scots Pine, no okay. problem. Okay, I, I have no a, a Pinus Silvestris and uh -huh. uh, I, I, I uh, set up uh, in full sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all the pines uh, will love to have sun all day long, but yes. unfortunately in this location I have not. So okay, even, okay. even if the sun is only to three o'clock uh, in the afternoon, uh, with some product uh, and some help, uh, let's say, the tree are still very nice and strong. So at uh, this time it's uh, in a shade environment? Yes, now, yes. There is a, now there is a shade all over the garden because it is four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, perfect. Is there a species that you particularly like, uh, that you inspire more like uh, others? Uh, I'm a big fan uh, of conifers, uh, as I said. Uh, yes. And uh, my favorite one, uh, for sure, is the Scots pine. In my opinion, okay. uh, is the best uh, pine uh, for bonsai, even better than Japanese uh, white uh, or black pine. Uh, yes, yes. Here in Europe, uh, we have uh, so many sub uh, variety of Scots uh, going from the south uh, to the north uh, and going yes. even from east uh, to west of Europe. Uh, and every one of these sub variety have a uh, kind of a certain characteristic. Uh, but in general, Scots pine is the best pine for bonsai, can reduce the needle, uh, have a lot of ramification, is very strong. Uh, Yes. The trunk has a beautiful bark, uh, the color, the green bluish color, talking about uh, the French Scots as this beautiful bluish color is fantastic, mm -hmm. is, uh, is my, one of my favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> yes. Oh, very to, good, very good. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in France we have the, the, the luck to, to get uh, this, uh, these trees. Uh, by collecting uh, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Alpes, yes. The French <laughs> Alpes are very famous for the beautiful yes, Scots yes, pines. Yes. yes, sure. I know two, two of my friends, uh, I speciali specialized uh, in this tree. They collecting uh, every every year. Me too, me too. I come in France okay, too, to so collect. <laughs> We can see you in Alp uh, exactly. Maybe, every year. No, it's difficult to see me. I, I have camouflage, so it's, it's impossible <laughs> okay. to see me. Okay. <laughs> can you tell us more about uh, this uh, this Godzilla uh, Silvestri spine? Okay. I, I see. Uh, I see in a reel uh, in the trophy 2019. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. So. Uh, I was uh, I have a good connection uh, with all the bonsai world uh, let's say so either other professional collectors and everything and one day I got a call from a friend uh, in Torino that actually is in the border between uh, Italy and France uh, yes. and, and he said I went out collecting uh, and uh, I collected this beautiful uh, Scots pine with a lot of dead wood I'm sure you will like it so I okay. said okay send me a picture of the material so he said okay tomorrow when i pot the tree because he just went down the mountain the day he called me yes. tomorrow that uh, uh, i will plant the tree i send you a picture so i said okay uh, i got the picture and i was amazed because uh, i no never hesitation. <laughs> yeah i never saw a apart a big tree like that but with such a big amount of dead wood normally is very rare to find the Scots pine with dead wood because uh, pines uh, with dead wood most of all is bugo pine because they grow in a higher elevation so that tree was growing in an avalanche in a rock avalanche place uh, and the trunk was uh, the part that now has uh, the front uh, was facing up so every year yes. rocks uh, and the snow were falling on top of the tree and scratching the bark away and killing that part of the tree. So I told uh, the guy I need to have that tree and uh, finally we got an agreement and I got the material. And uh, it was uh, six years ago. And uh, since I got the tree, the tree really developed very fast. Uh, it was always uh, willing to grow, grow, grow every year doubling the vegetation and getting more compact uh, and uh, I got the chance to show the tree at the, at the trophy like two years yes. ago. My only concern about that tree is the pot. Uh, I still have to find the really perfect pot for the tree yes. but it's difficult. Finding big pots for those big trees is not so easy. It's a custom pot? 
is a Chinese pot uh, that uh, I uh, uh, use uh, graphite, graphite, pencil graphite to make it looking a little bit more old. So I, okay. I uh, put the graphite with oil in the surface of the pot mm -hmm. and the clay, the pot, the ceramic, uh, absorb the graphite and become a little bit darker. So I take away that kind of a new reddish color of the you know, commercial Chinese container. Okay, I didn't know you, uh, there is a yeah, tec yeah. techniques to so change the, the appearance. Yeah, yeah. You, if you want to give patina to a pot yes. that is not so good, uh, it is better to do it where you don't have the tree inside because you can use a fire, graphite, graphite, and oil. So the fire uh, help uh, the graphite to go more inside of the pot and get this old patina. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when you are styling a tree, do you follow a Japanese aesthetic code or do you develop your own style or, or just a freestyle or more style? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I start doing bonsai reading and buying all the bonsai magazines from all over the world. And okay. uh, I had, uh, let's say, Uh, one bonsai master here in uh, in Italy that his name is Enrico Savini that he was uh, studying with another Italian bonsai master international that is uh, uh, Salvatore Liporace yes. and uh, Salvatore developed uh, a little bit starting from uh, the Japanese aesthetic uh, he developed a little bit of uh, his style so I, I think we are all uh, kind of uh, chaining uh, this uh, aesthetic uh, but a little bit every one of us uh, and this is in general talking about uh, uh, all the major bonsai artists in the world uh, so we start from the general bonsai aesthetic uh, that we can say is Japanese, uh, Japanese yes. and then uh, we kind of uh, manipulate that aesthetic according to our taste I like trees uh, with a lot of dynamism, with a very strong first branch uh, pointing the front of the tree that is uh, different uh, from Japan uh, where they tend to do a more equal trees with two branches yes, side by side. Right. So, you know, every one of us uh, a little bit uh, adjust uh, the aesthetic according to our taste, uh, basically. Uh, and do you, do you think uh, the European style exists? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there is Japanese style, Chinese style, European style, South American style, American style. Mm -hmm. You know, according to the different the, the different influences, uh, there are a lot of different styles. Uh, and every nowadays, that the help uh, of the internet uh, show us uh, the work that other bonsai artists da doing all over the world. Uh, you know, they exchange of information and the exchange of technique is so high that uh, you know I uh, sometimes design a tree and uh, it's not European style but there are parts of every style inside for example I just finished a rock composition with a juniper a few days ago I saw, saw it uh, in Probably your Facebook page you saw on Facebook you know <laughs> yes that, very good that, job Thank you. That tree is not the, the normal uh, uh, European or Japanese tree, it's more something uh, that they do in Indonesia with this tree with a lot of movement mm. on top of the rock. Uh, yes, and they changing. Exactly, and yes. they generally use uh, some uh, uh, tropical tree, but I did it with a juniper. So, you know, mm. uh, we have the tree, it's like uh, with painting, uh, you know. Painting, mm -hmm. uh, painters uh, in the 18th centuries, they started traveling all over and started changing ideas uh, one with the other. So, you know, either Picasso, Monet, Manet, during their career, they changed the style so many times because according to the period they were living, uh, they had different tastes uh, mm -hmm. and, dif and, and also different goals uh, to kind of ac achieve. So, okay, so, so you, you mix different cultures, so yes. you can uh, you can uh, create a very inspired uh, uh, style. <laughs> I try, I try, I try. I, I'm lucky that uh, my style uh, is uh, recognizable because for an mm -hmm. artist, uh, you know, when people see a tree and they can say, okay, this is Mauro Stenberger tree, oh, that, that it's means... A, it's uh, yeah. the high level. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, they, they, they can say, they can, even if they don't like it or, or they don't like it because uh, they like, because it's, it's just uh, personal sometimes. But uh, I, I'm glad that people can recognize uh, my, that is my tree, you know? Okay, yes. Do, do you know uh, uh, Sandro Seigneury? Si, sure, absolutely. He's one of the best, uh, the best uh, uh, bonsai instructor yes. and artist we have here in Italy. Uh, yes, in my opinion, uh, I very like his style uh, because he, he doesn't uh, do a very standard uh, shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's good to see on his style that uh, he likes uh, most of the time or sometimes to break uh, some of the general bonsai rules. Uh, yes. But uh, doing that, uh, it doesn't make something that look uh, ugly or strange. Mm -hmm. It makes something that look nice. And this is the good thing about him, uh, in my opinion. Because yes. even uh, if you use a branch and you cross in front uh, of the tree, at the end uh, of the you know overall image of the tree that branch look good uh, and this mm -hmm. is the perfect uh, example about you know changing the rules uh, according to the type uh, of style you wanna yes have, and it was uh, pro prohibited by the japanese code but exactly exactly <laughs> exactly exactly absolutely so uh, i'm a student uh, of uh, sandro seigneury uh -huh, very so good perfect very good he has several school in france so I, I try to, to learn uh, the, the styling with, uh, with this yeah, guy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very good for an amateur as you are to, you know, go with a professional and learn as much as you can because uh, you can, uh, you know, upwards uh, your bonsai skill uh, and your bonsai technique and then, uh, you know, slowly you can do bonsai your way. That's the best. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about uh, your experience in uh, exhibition and demo? You already uh, done? Sure, yeah. Uh, so ba basically, it's more or less 10 years that I travel uh, and I do, you know, demonstration all over the world. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been everywhere. Let's say in the five continents, uh, and I did demos uh, in many different type of trees, uh, either you know tropical trees, European, American, mm -hmm. South America, South African trees, uh, you know, everything and. Uh, uh, is always a good challenge for me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a demo for me is uh, a challenge with myself uh, in question of giving uh, a good uh, show because you have to give uh, a good show yes. for the people. You have to give a lot of information uh, and uh, you have to give a final result uh, that is up to the standard that I have and I like. So. Uh, talking about the recent and the last uh, demo that I did, uh, that was uh, the trophy, uh, the last trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the chance to bring my own material. So for the first demo, I did a big Scots pine that was kind of a uh, difficult tree because I uh, had uh, some uh, technical issue to solve. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second day I did more like a traditional uh, Japanese work uh, with the juniper grafted into Egawa where I have uh, to reset uh, the, uh, the shape uh, with the new foliage. So I did a completely different work, uh, but you know, the goal uh, is always try to give uh, as many information as possible to the people because mm -hmm. you, are, you are paid uh, to, you know, educate people. It's not about, uh, you know, just the final resort. It's the final resort, but uh, also giving m as many information as, as you can. Yes, we, we have to understand this is a, a step, but not uh, the final result. Uh. Oh no, absolutely. Bonsai is, bonsai is never for today, it's always for tomorrow. Yes, uh, the, the demonstration is often uh, uh, criticized. Well, what do you think? So, you know, in the past uh, the big problem that we had uh, was that people were collecting trees uh, and working the trees uh, too early and doing too much work to the tree. Bending big branches and the main time cleaning the needle and in the main time doing jing and shari and in the main time wiring and positioning yes. all the foliage. And unfortunately, doing that, a lot of trees died. Yes. Now, what we try to do for myself, what I do, I prepare the material. So I have a certain number of trees that are ready to be worked, for example, talking about Scots pine. 
I remove the original soil and I mm -hmm. have the trees uh, in pure pumice. If I have mm -hmm. to do bi big banding, I just do the banding uh, first uh, and I do the fine wiring uh, after. So yes. it's uh, just uh, giving the tree time uh, to you know recover and be always strong and ready for the main work. When is the time of the demo, I have the tree ready and strong for that particular operation and I don't have problem of having the tree weak or losing or dying after the demo. Okay, so very good practice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah I know, I know uh, Pioneer Silver Swiss, uh, when they are collected, uh, we wait uh, three years before uh, work on it. Yes, yes, yes. In what I what I do, I collect them uh, and uh, the French ones are in this uh, kind of uh, clay. Mm -hmm. So when I collect, I clean a little bit of this clay away to mm -hmm. kind of free some of the roots uh, so that those roots can start developing in the new pumice. Yes. And then uh, as soon as the tree start having the tree buds, uh, so that is the sign the tree is stronger. I take it out of the pot and I try to remove as much as that uh, original clay as possible. And then uh, I start working on the tree in terms of bending uh, or wiring the okay. branches. So, so two repotting before work? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So yes. two, three years? Uh... Yeah, three, four, five years. It depends mm -hmm. on the tree, you know. Some yes. trees are, are stronger than other and uh, they in one year or two years uh, are ready to go. Other trees, because they are older or they didn't have so many roots, mm -hmm. they take longer time. And, you know, every tree is different, it's like people. We can't run the marathon or at the <laughs> same time. You know, one uh, run the marathon in five hours, if I run the marathon, it will be 20 hours, maybe, if I finish. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good comparison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you, uh, do you provide the tree or is it the, the organizer? It, it, it depends on the organization. For example, I was in Salieu. Mm -hmm. in October and then at the trophy in February and both uh, because they know I have good material they asked me to bring my own material for okay. the, the demonstration but okay. uh, you know uh, sometimes I have to fly someplace uh, and people provide yes. <laughs> uh, you know they provide the material it's not a problem for me I don't I okay mean, so if, if not uh, your trees uh, you can't uh, judge uh, the health and it, this uh, is the problem of the organizer. So <laughs> it's not <yeah>. your problem. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't like to work a tree and then the tree die. Yes. It happened it happened sometimes uh, that uh, I was feeling a little bit uh, awkward uh, about the earth of the tree they want me to work. Uh, so yeah, I, ha I asked uh, if they had uh, a backup tree. Mm -hmm. And then I, I pick a tree that I was sure it was uh, stronger. So, you know. Okay, so you see the tree before and you accept after, uh, yes. depending the, of the, the, the health. <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't want to give a bad, uh, a bad feedback a bad after example. my demo, you know. Yes. Um, in terms of origin, um, what is the di distribution between your purchases, your, uh, your imported uh, trees, your, your, uh, your collecting trees? No, most of the trees I have uh, are native trees. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I have 70% uh, of native trees uh, and 30% uh, of Japanese trees. Okay. Uh, as I said, I was always, uh, you know, lucky to have access to very good uh, uh, Yamadori places, uh, mm -hmm. either here in the Dolomites, all over Europe in general. And also I have good contact with other people who collect uh, from, you know, Spain uh, or other part of Europe. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I got a lot of very good and high level uh, native trees. Okay, so very local tree. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Okay. It's the better, so you don't have to it's acclimate not, it's not, uh, the tree. No, Laura, uh, we are lucky because generally uh, the Japanese tree they acclimatize very well to Europe because it's yes. most uh, most of all the same uh, uh, latitude, and uh, they are you know hardly most of them juniper pines, uh, Texas, uh, so they can grow all over Europe with no problem. Except but the humidity, maybe. 
See, the humidity is a little bit different, uh, but still uh, those are mo the mountain trees uh, in Japan uh, yes. are kind of used to our climate already. Uh, but again, uh, I, I find out that uh, if we can develop a, a very high standard bonsai with a local or native material, uh, is kind of uh, cheaper to just uh, import uh, a Finnish uh, Japanese yes, yes, bonsai. Yes. And nowadays, uh, with the Chinese market going so high, the prices in Japan mm -hmm. are very high as well. So it's difficult to find a good material to reasonable price. Yes, and I think it's good to have a, a lot of work to do on the tree. If you, oh, yeah, if you buy a, a very good piece, it's not uh, your personal work and uh, I think it's less interesting. No, uh, to, to, to develop uh, a bonsai is a beautiful experience uh, mm -hmm. and is a beautiful journey. So you can learn a lot from the tree and uh, you know, develop a lot uh, your bonsai skill uh, working, uh, you know, try to you know, develop a material and you know, make it into a beautiful bonsai. Mm. So very good transition. <laughs> Have you ever worked uh, a tree from a cut or a seed? <laughs> so, uh, I, when I started bonsai, I did a lot of, uh, you know, grafting uh, and planting yes. seeds uh, and air layering. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, I still uh, develop little juniper from cuttings uh, to yes. use uh, for, for grafting uh, on Sabina juniper or other junipers, for example. Uh, I don't develop them for a future in bonsai, I just uh, develop them to use uh, in a bonsai. So now is kind of different. Oh, but, okay. you know, starting bonsai as a hobby, I experiment uh, almost everything in bonsai. <laughs> so you didn't have a, a cutting uh, tree uh, uh, that follow you uh, 20 years? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I think uh, uh, one of my uh, older tree is uh, maybe 20 years with me. But I'm, do, I'm doing bonsai for 30 years now, almost 30 years. Uh, I, I, all my you know, be, beginner tree, I gift along the way to other yes, bonsai yes, yes. enthusiasts or students that they come around. Uh, because as I said, I was always looking to have the best uh, collection. Mm -hmm. So when a, a tree didn't fit uh, the standard of my collection, most of the time I sold uh, or give it away. Okay, final oh, question. Uh, do you have advice uh, for those who, who want to, to move forward in the bonsai world in, in good condition? So there are a lot of different options. If uh, you feel uh, you want to become a bonsai professional, mm -hmm. my advice is to go in Japan and do the general, uh, uh, you know, uh, master student uh, uh, exchange. That uh, to be is an like, apprentice. Yeah, to be okay. an apprentice with some bonsai master over in Japan for like five, six years. Mm -hmm. But even if you just want to do bonsai in a high level and still in a hobby, uh, there are a lot of bonsai masters like myself uh, that uh, I provide uh, intensive classes uh, in my place twice a year, for example, mm -hmm. where people uh, fly uh, from all over the world uh, and they stay in my place for 10 days, 15 days, uh, and we work bonsai every day. So I try to, you know, help people, uh, you know, developing their bonsai skills. And uh, there are a lot of schools. So you are an example following uh, the, you know, uh, Bonsai Creativo School uh, in France. Yes. I have, uh, I have as well uh, some bonsai school in Germany, in uh, Brazil, uh, in United States. Uh, so people come uh, in those uh, cities uh, and they do the school with me twice a year, most of the time. Okay. And uh, you know, or. Uh, Try to participate as much as you can to, you know, workshop uh, that mm. the local clubs uh, organize yes, yes, yes. Uh, with with different uh, bonsai masters. Uh, you know, it's always good to see many different ways of doing bonsai and get uh, as many information as possible. And again, nowadays we are lucky with internet. Uh, there are a lot of very good uh, YouTube channel as well that give us a lot of information. I have. Uh, 
a YouTube channel if you follow me, Mauro Stenberger, but there are many others uh, like Ryan Neal uh, with Bonsai Mirai mm -hmm. or Bjorn uh, with uh, Bonsai You. Hey, so, uh, already subscribed are... to. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's good because there are a lot of information. And you, you, your channel is very growing. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy about how the channel is doing. It's about, uh, you know, working trees, basically. I'm yes. pre pretty much a very practical person. So I like to show and share with people uh, the process of creating trees. So that's the main goal of my channel. Yes, this is what I do in my uh, YouTube channel. It's not uh, a master bonsai channel. It's just to to share what I uh, what I do with my tree. Sure, it's so perfect. So you, you see the evolution with uh, all uh, I learn, and uh, and the tree uh, evolve with me. Sharing the experience uh, is one of the best thing in bonsai because uh, other people can. Uh, get very good information even from you that you are not a professional but you are experimenting you know the way of growing trees in little containers yes the last thing i would like to say uh, if you give me a chance I, I would like to show my bonsai book uh, bonsai dream yes i, pu I published this book uh, uh, two years ago uh, is a you know full color book uh, again uh, a little bit uh, the same as my YouTube channel, has a lot of uh, stories uh, of uh, my trees uh, from my collection, from mm -hmm. the moment they were collected uh, to the moment uh, uh, they were considered finished tree, even if we can never say that the bonsai is finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, the book is in English and Italian, so in case uh, someone is interested, they can contact me via email uh, and uh, maybe you can give people my email uh, and they can get a copy of my book. Uh, I will add uh, a link uh, in the description uh, below my video. <laughs> thank you, I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much. Again, thank you very much, uh, Mauro. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, for and, your time. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 for your time to put in together the video and the question uh, is, yes. is easy for me. I just talk, uh, you are the one behind the scene. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Very good. Have a good day okay. and uh, keep learning bonsai. Okay? And stay home. <laughs> yeah, stay home, stay home. <laughs> See you, Mao. <rire> Thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. Voilà, cette interview est terminée. Je suis vraiment content qu'il ait pu accepter. Il a pris du temps pour bien expliquer. Il était accessible. Franchement, j'ai vraiment apprécié de, de faire cette interview avec lui. Euh, J'espère que je pourrai avoir l'occasion d'en faire d'autres avec euh, d'autres personnes. Vous avez vu, c'est quelqu'un de très accessible, euh, qui, qui aime vraiment bien faire les choses. J'ai été vraiment euh, content de sa réponse sur les, les démonstrations qui sont souvent critiquées, où on fait beaucoup de choses, on essaye d'impressionner et les arbres meurent après. Lui, vraiment, il prend le temps de, de bien regarder la santé de l'arbre. Quand il amène ses arbres, il les prépare vraiment pour les démos. Il veut que ce soit en pleine forme. Ça, j'ai vraiment apprécié. Donc, c'est... C'est quelqu'un de bien. <rire> j'ai aussi appris quelque chose sur sa méthode de, pour essayer de patiner les peaux. J'ai trouvé ça super intéressant. Vous me direz dans les commentaires ce que vous en pensez. Mauro, je le suis sur, euh, sur YouTube, sur sa page Facebook. Je l'ai vu aussi en démonstration. C'est toujours super intéressant de pouvoir poser des questions personnelles et surtout de pouvoir les partager avec vous pour que tout le monde puisse en bénéficier. En tout cas, vous pouvez retrouver dans la description de la vidéo euh, ses liens, donc sa page Facebook, son YouTube et puis le lien pour le livre. Et quant à nous, on se retrouve bientôt pour un prochain sujet. Et faites du bonsaï Hello. <rire> Très bien. On, on fait en français alors. <rire> oui, 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 oui. <rire> Et mon anglais est, est un peu euh, un peu spécial aussi, mais ça va le faire. Au moins les questions seront seront propres et puis euh, on, on prend. <rire> ok. Now I'm recording. Yes, you, you did the clap. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for yes, me. Exactly. I want to see my, my uh, smartphone, but I have to look uh, the camera. <laughs> no, yeah, sure, me too. I I, I move away my my phone, uh, and then I just look straight at the camera. <laughs> yes.
I I uh, I see your your um, your Italian accent. <laughs> And do you see my French accent? <laughs> okay. <laughs>